Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, July 18, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? The first thing we notice is a gap and crap situation. So let's pick apart the charts. Let's talk further about the daily chart And then we'll talk about some intraday charts. We'll find out what the market's doing, what it's likely going to do on the downside if it continues further, and then from a longer-term perspective, what else is going on from the longer-term charts. So we're going to cover the gamut. So the first thing we notice is the things jumping off the page on the daily chart. Not only is it a gap in crap, but we have a couple of other things going on. So they came up short of the 50-period moving average. However, the main reason they did that is because they ran into this area of overhead resistance around this pivot high here, which is also this pivot high here, only they didn't get that far. But these areas represent a big-time area in total of overhead resistance You would have thought they would have got to the 50-period moving average on a spike up. However, rather than the thing that it looked like they were going to do, instead, the Trick Trap Fool and Frustrate crew shows up. They turn the market around, issue a gap and crap slash pie-in-the-face situation, and leave everybody guessing slash holding the bag by the end of the day. That's everybody that was bullish from this morning and thinking they were going to get a ride on the further upside train. Now, we're going to jump around a little bit. What I'm showing you here is a snippet from before the market opened from inside the numbers, 8.40 a.m. Let's get the visual of the big picture. For this, we were using the futures chart to point out where we are, where overhead resistance was and why. So it's really the same area, same scenario we just looked at in the SPY chart. But this morning, I'm using the futures chart because they were open, they were operational. We could see the pre-market high already. So the two black lines represent the ones we just went over, the pivot highs, their overhead resistance, their areas that the market ran up to and was rejected. Therefore, we know that those areas are important, not because we made it up, but because the market already told us by virtue of Being at that price and being rejected, the market tells us that those prices are important. So they came very close to the 50-period moving average on the daily chart. Even if they hit the 50, right above is the first pivot high, which can be magnetic, but also overhead resistance. Doesn't mean they can't or won't get through, just might take some time, food for thought. So what we're saying right out of the chute is they're at a big spot from an overhead resistance standpoint. Now, truth be told, I didn't necessarily think we were going to get a gap in crap early this morning, but I didn't think we were going to go much higher, maybe a sideways type of pullback, small shallow pullback type of day is really what I had in mind this morning. However, when the day unfolds, it is what it is. The point in showing you that is we're looking at a bunch of different things as early as possible to get both sides of the tape, the big picture under our belt. We want to know where the market is from the big picture perspective. It helps us when we drill down to an intraday basis. We have in our mind, because we've already studied it for the day, what's going on, whether it be above or below current price, depending on what's happening. Today, it was above current price. We knew the market wasn't going to be a runaway situation. That was the point and putting that chart up long before the opening bell. Didn't tell us it was a gap in crap, but we had at least the scenario where they're not going to just take off, so nobody hop on the bus just yet. Now, we've gone down to a 240-minute chart. I want to start talking about what's below current price. What happens if we wake up to a gap down tomorrow? What are the important things going on in this chart? Well, as you can see, we had the Low here, which was 380.54, basically tested today. They didn't quite get there. They came up 12 cents short. However, that low was basically tested. We call that the window to the world. Window meaning it's a window to the no man's land where they fill the gap next up if they keep falling. The gap 
is at 377.96. We'll just call it 378 for argument's sake. So basically what we can say is getting below the low here, 380.54 on candle closes begins to open the door to fill the gap down at 378, potentially even lower. You have to see in real time what's going on, but that's from a semi-big picture situation. When we drill down to a 120-minute chart, we basically see the same thing. There's no difference from this chart to the last one we just looked at. Same scenario. You can see today the low over here basically coincided with this convergence of moving averages. So there were a couple to three reasons why, by the end of the day, they were A, going to be drawn into that area being magnetic and such, and B, likely to find some kind of, at least from an intraday perspective, support. The hourly chart's telling us the same thing. They start getting below today's low, below this low over here, which is the same low we looked at, 380.54. You've got a big fat round number of 380, but if they're already down there, the door is opening to fill the gap left open from the other day. And keep in mind, all this is normal garden variety pullback type stuff if they're eating time off the clock. Well, what do you mean by that? That's a pretty healthy pullback today. And you're right, it is when you look at an hourly chart or a 120 chart or a shorter term chart or even a daily chart, you had the gap and crap. Again, we're in the perspective business. Let's keep perspective of what's going on from a weekly chart perspective. They're still eating time off the clock, going back and forth in a range. Now, on the weekly chart, the range is big. It looks much bigger on the shorter-term charts. The range is up here to down here. That's a big range. And while they're doing that, going back and forth, what we say about it is that they're eating time off the clock in a bullish formation. They have a move higher off the low, then they begin to go sideways, eating time off the clock, which is also allowing the market to build energy to make another push higher to where? Into the convergence of these moving averages. That's not off the table. It just didn't happen today. It hasn't happened yet. Doesn't mean it's off the table. It becomes or it will be off the table if they start getting below certain prices, which we'll talk about if it begins to develop, certainly from an intraday perspective, inside the number members, I'll have a beat on what those numbers are, certainly on an as-needed basis. Let's go back to inside the numbers. We'll cover the commentary. We don't have to worry about stocks on the move today. The gap up eliminated stocks on the move this morning. Stuff got moving later in the day, but from a pre-market perspective, we were shooting blanks. We had three on the board, but none of them hit their numbers. So we'll just be back tomorrow with stocks on the move. Remember, it's still earnings season, but Mondays are always going to be pretty light as compared to the rest of the week. So the rest of the week should be fruitful from a stocks on the move perspective. We had a happy Monday today. Wake up with some follow through after Friday's rally. So that's what we had early this morning. The bulls were back in town, down to business. Our bear pivot is 385.25. Now pay attention to this. It's extremely important. Whether this morning or this afternoon, 385 and a quarter is our bear pivot. That means if they start getting below there and closing below there, the bears really take over the ball and they start pushing price lower and some of the lower stuff, the door becomes open, they go there, it's magnetic, all that stuff. 385 and a quarter was that bear pivot. Right of the vertical is today's activity. We're looking at a 15-minute chart, and you can see the horizontal line is at 385 and a quarter, and that's where they really started breaking down for the remainder of the day. They started a lot earlier than that, but as you know, we have other numbers that are important above that they start getting below, which opens the door for 385 to begin with anyway. But remember, this was the number in the pre-market so we don't even know if they're going to fall before the opening bell, fall right after the opening bell. So this, again, was big picture stuff in the pre-market. This is the pre-game warm-up routine. Getting below, closing candles below, opens a door for 384.20, and then other stuff which we handle in real time. They were nowhere near that in the pre-market. 
The bull pivot today is 387.30. Below doesn't mean the bears have the ball or anything, but being above keeps the door open for another leg higher, like in the neighborhood of 389.55 to 390 and a quarter. And with an early Monday floater on our hands, stocks on the move were elusive at best. We already talked about that. So we already saw this chart. Now, let's go back to the charts for a second, because as we get granular, this is now a five minute chart. You could see 387.30 was that bull pivot. So they opened above it. They came in for a back test or a test of it, and then they bounced away from it. They tried to rally, but they couldn't really get much done. They did provide a trade for traders, not only from an inside the number perspective, but I also believe there was a few traders in the room that took this trade as well. So here's what it looks like as the day begins to unfold. Here's 905. We'll let them go for a while, see what's what. 387.30, give or take, is that first spot, meaning to test for an opportunity, early shakeout type stuff. We're moving along. We've got 921. I was a willing short trader in the zone, which was overhead resistance. They never got to the zone, but watch this one. Aggressive traders can short the market in that zone if reached sooner than later. 388.69 for an extra aggressive entry. There's your 388.69. I didn't take that short, but I certainly wish I did and wish I held it. It was unlikely anyway. I would have exited, which I told traders that did take the short to exit at 387.30. Why? Because early in the day, all they did was that back test. We went long there. We got a bounce for exactly the amount that we expected. The trade was over. So some traders got a two-way trade. Other traders that didn't want the short got a long trade. And inside the numbers had a successful morning from that perspective. Let's see what else we have as the day begins to get underway. I basically told you everything, but here's where it was in black and white. 388.69 is going to be the pivot. That's by 940. So above, another leg higher into that zone can happen or ensue. And below, they can come down to 387.30. So some traders took the short up there. They came down to 387.30, which was a cover. By 941, looking for a bounce back up trade. 387.30 would be the front end of support. 386.45 would be the backup number. Below that, and the bears start the plan of attack on 385, give or take. 385 sound familiar? Yes, it does. They go to resistance, never get into the zone I was willing to short at. Came up about 45 cents short or so. It came down to support, a cover for the shorts, a long trade. Now watch this. And remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. Now here they were just hanging around, they were doing not much but the chop shop formation stuff. And then all of a sudden, minutes later, they're into the front end of showtime for the Bulls to play some defense. They can certainly go lower like the 386.40, give or take. Any trader that took the short would take profit at 387.30. So there you have that. Whether they bounce here or a little lower, 388 and a quarter or higher is the target. Profit would be taken around there. So we're in at 387.30, and there's the adjustment, and out at 388.25, and you can see the high after the entry was 388.26. There are no accidents nor coincidences. There is a method to the madness. That trade worked out basically to the penny. And... We're moving along. Pause the video. Read the notes. Go back to the chart to double check the work. You'll see the numbers on the downside. And then as we got in later in the day, it's basically anything goes below 385 and they can certainly accelerate on the downside below that and they can fall into the 382s. What did they do? They fell into the 382s even a little bit lower. But with time running out on the clock, you don't want to chase the market with an hour or two left in the day. It's very difficult other than a short-term scalp trade. That's one thing. But trying to chase the market into the end of the day is a very, very difficult business to be in. The volume was very, very light to begin with, but at least there's some participation in the morning. That's your best bet for the morning rush hour. That's the participation. By the way, 
This is a reversal candle. It's minus the volume. It was light volume like we just discussed. But where does the rescue operation take place? They start getting back to 388 or above 388 and then above today's high, 389.09. That's going to be a pretty good sign that they're going to trade into and through that 50 period moving average. Now, I'm not saying that's happening tomorrow morning. I'm just saying if it does, when it does, you'll know what to look out for. It pays to know your numbers. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, they touched the 50 period moving average. They finished down 28 cents on the day. It's not a big deal. It looks like a big deal on the chart. All they did was run into resistance. That doesn't mean they're finished going higher. There was nothing wrong technically with the IWM today other than they had a gap in crap and it wasn't on heavy volume. Look at the difference between Friday's up volume. Now, granted, that was options expiration, but today's volume as compared was significantly lower and it was a down day. So I have a tendency to look at that and have like a grain of salt type of thing going on. I look at it and I say, okay, price is the absolute arbiter, but it's kind of one of those phony slash fake sell-offs until proven otherwise. So what? They went into the 50 period moving average into some overhead resistance and they were rejected. They pulled back, but they weren't rejected to the point where they're making lower lows just yet. If that happens, so be it. We'll talk about it at the time, but that's not the case right now. What about the folks down at the transportation department? So they made a run higher. They made a lower high. So we have to note this, right? And this is prevalent in other markets as well. I just didn't talk about it yet. So they made a lower high. So we have a high, lower high. And here's a rejection tail candle, lower high, not tremendous volume, not even the average volume, but price is the absolute arbiter. They were up on the day, but the price action told us based on the fact that they finished near the lows of the day that we could be in or they could be in a rejection type of scenario. So here's the way we treat that. We get rid of the line so I can use other tools on the chart and we say this closing price from Friday, 13212 and change. That's going to be a new line in the sand. It's a gauge. Get below that on a closing basis, first hourly, for example, from an intraday perspective, and then close the day below that. And that opens the door for a test of the low of that day, meaning last Friday. So we're going to use that as a gauge, staying above it, and she's okay, getting below it, and she's not okay. The Q people, on a down day tomorrow, for example, they're going to come into the 20 period moving average and fill the gap. Now, if that's all it is, then it's just a back test filling of the gap. They should do it with a light touch, if you will, and then resume the uptrend from the higher low scenario. However, if they start getting below this gap and we're using the price of 286.67 and they start closing candles below their hourly, intraday, daily close below there, that's a different scenario. Then the higher low scenario would be in jeopardy and we would be eyeballing Thursday's low over here, which comes in at 279.80, a spike of the big fat round number down at 280, which is a little bit ways away from where we are. So the market would be getting hit pretty hard if that's going on. So in the spirit of it's all the same market, they would all be getting hit. The financials, all the charts look the same. You have the reversal candle, the gap and crap candle, whatever you want to call it but they weren't really down that much on the day. It was on light volume, so we're giving it the, it could be the fake out type of situation. Obviously, Tuesday's gonna tell us more. We do have turnaround Tuesday coming up. Good for the bull case on Tuesday would be something like this. A gap down, a reversal, finishing positive for the day, meaning not at, but near the highs, or at least a positive close. That would bode well for the bull picture going forward. A poor day and a poor close tomorrow changes the entire complexion slash complexity of the tape. Smash Mouth started out great today. They crapped out like everything else. However, when you look at it from where they were just a few days ago, it's just a pullback. They were below 200. They're at 213. Tried to rally today. Didn't get to the 50 period moving average up here at 221. They were slightly rejected, but this isn't a debacle. 
It's a pullback. Don't be fooled by what looks like a reversal candle. We had a gap in crap. It's not the end of the world. Remember, Trick and Company uses these type of tools to do what? Exactly, to trick you. And by the way, before the comments come rolling in and the emails come rolling in, I'm well aware that the media's position was the rollover today was due to Apple. I get that scenario. Whether you want to buy into that story or not remains your decision. They announced some slowing of hiring. That's not exactly announcing layoffs, unless they did, but they announced, as far as I'm concerned or I know, a slowing of hiring. That's not necessarily a bad thing for the stock going forward. That means they're keeping costs contained in the big scheme of things. That would seem like a positive corporate development. We'll see how that all shakes out going forward. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.